This is New Day Northwest. Now from the Premier of Blue Cross Studio, here's Margaret Larson. Welcome to New Day Northwest. We are going to talk about a Seattle icon in just a moment and the efforts to save it. We're also going to visit with McKinney Howell from Plum Bistro. She's back there spicing up some salads. And a little girl with a big fish and a story to tell. She's got a record, a state record, to tell us all about in just a few minutes. But first up today, an iconic Seattle concert venue avoids the wrecking ball, at least for now. Earlier this week, the Seattle City Council voted to protect the show box at the market from destruction, while organizers worked to have it preserved as an historical landmark. Since it opened back in 1939, the show box has hosted a who's who of musical acts, from the legendary Duke Ellington to blues icon Muddy Waters, and bands that helped put the Seattle sound on the map, to a bevy of local bands expanding the Seattle music scene even today. Bands like Windowpane, who have rocked the show box for nearly a decade. So with a song from their new album, please welcome Window Pain. Maybe I should go. Maybe I should move. Maybe I should hang on just one more time for I go on loving you. Maybe I should cry. Maybe I should see. Maybe I should hang on just one more time like you're hanging on to me. Maybe I should go, maybe I should lie Maybe I should sit on down one more drink So I can look you in the eye Maybe I'm obsessed, maybe I can't rest Maybe I can't feel your skin beneath my hands Till I get this off my chest Cause I The more I run Maybe I'm ashamed Maybe I'm to blame Maybe that's the reason why my lips might move Still can't speak your name Maybe it's the truth The bottle stole my youth Maybe all the days since then that came and went Only helped to show me proof from you
the more I run from you. You guys are so good. So, come on over, Glenn. Glenn Cannon, the lead singer, is going to join us over here. How have you been? I'm in one piece. How have instead? you been? I'm good. Oh, good. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Naomi. Joining nice Naomi to meet West you. from Historic Seattle. Would you introduce the rest of the band members? Yeah, so we've got Tony Abreu on lead guitar over here. Awesome. Kristen Casper on the bass guitar. And Mr. Noah Phipps on the drums. Back there on the drums. Yep. Um, Naomi, tell us a little bit about where we stand with all of this now. Um, everybody's loved the show box. We've all gone to shows there. We know there's change in Seattle, but sometimes you want to draw a line. What's happening? At this point, we have Historic Seattle, along with our advocacy coalition of Vanishing Seattle and Friends of Historic Belltown, have submitted a landmark nomination. So we're waiting to hear from the city landmark staff when the hearing on that nomination will be scheduled. Um, on Monday, the Seattle City Council moved forward a proposal to expand temporarily the Pike Place Market Historic District. So it now, for the next 10 months, will encompass the singular showbox site in addition to where the market currently is defined. So that has some elements of protection for use beyond what landmarking can offer. Landmarking will protect the building, which is very important. If the building's not protected, it will be demolished. But use also, the showbox having been in operation as a venue since 1939, it's not something where it can just become a bar or a restaurant or a store. It needs to stay in operation as a cultural venue for the benefit of our city. We've had a lot of friends. You've had a lot of people come out, Pearl Jam, Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses and Walking Papers and et cetera, et cetera, and, and the fine folks at Window Pane and so many others coming forward to say, hey, we need to save this space. Glenn, why is it important to you and why is this not just some, oh. you know, random music venue? Well. I mean, of course, our city's changing, and I love to see our city grow, mm -hmm. but uh, we can't lose the heart of what this place has always been on so many different levels. Um, when, whether that's food or music or art, it, we're, if we're destroying our culture for the sake of another condominium complex, it's just a tragedy. And I mean, for, for artists like me, I can remember starting out in this music community just begging to get a Wednesday night and then a Thursday night and then it was if only we could play a Saturday and I think for any there, musician at that particular well eventually to, to if we could ever play the show box yeah. and then to go on to be in a band that's worked hard enough to play the show box and then sell out the show box and you know it, it's a very special place and the thought of losing something it'd be like you know LA tearing down the whiskey a go-go it just makes no sense. How do you do that? And that's that's how I really see it. Like you don't see someone putting up condos on Sunset Sunset Strip where these legendary clubs are. And that's what the Showbox Market is to Seattle. It's 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 a, it's really important to the culture and the history of of our city and its artistry. And so I think it would be a tragedy for this to occur in the name of dollars and cents. Well, and you said it at the beginning, which I completely agree. We know there's going to be growth. We know there's going to be change, and, and nobody can stop that. Nobody wants to. That's yeah, part of it's life. It's not a bad thing. It's just that every now and then there's a jewel that needs not to be dislodged. Um, how have you found just the general public reacting? You know, a lot of the people we're hearing from are not our normal preservation crowd. We have a lot of longtime members of our organization who have been with us because of architecture and because they've lived in Seattle for decades and they love the places that they grew up with. That's not who we're hearing from as much this time. They're in support of this too, but we're hearing from people who moved here recently and one of their first Seattle experiences has been a show at the Showbox with right. one of their favorite artists. We're hearing from the music community, which has been incredible for us. Our normal list for a meeting is not Duff McKagan and Mike from Pearl Jam <laughs> and Ben from Death Cab yeah, and Mac were, There'd team. be more meetings and lots of people yes, there. Yes, we'd have a meeting every day. Um, <laughs> So hearing from the music community, both the biggest names that you can imagine and some of the more local names, the up-and-comers in the Seattle community, has been incredible. Um, and I think what everybody is saying is, what can we do? And What can we do? Yes, exactly. So harnessing that energy into action through the policy channels that we have is what we've been advising. So as we started with Monday at the City Council on that vote, there's going to be more work there to ensure that that expansion becomes permanent and hopefully broader. There are a lot of other buildings along First Avenue that have been upzoned. And when you look at the plans for sites along that that corridor to the market, you're talking about a wall of towers. And so that's something where it makes you go, what are we tearing down and what are we replacing it with? Is it really built to last? Is it something that our city needs? 
housing vacancy in the new luxury buildings downtown is in the double digits. Mm -hmm. The proposal for this new tower is more luxury housing. That's not what our city needs. The so are there ways for individuals to get involved? Yes. Um, we are advising people now to contact the mayor's office regarding what city council passed the other day to sign it into law. And from there, we'll be working with the city council on the issues that they want to address through the temporary expansion, determining what the best way to manage that is. So along the way, we'll, we'll advise the public on what they can do to okay. help um, move you know, right. votes that way. And Glenn, just quickly, I want to give you the last word. Um, what does it mean to musicians to perform there? And especially those of you who grew up you know, seeing shows there as well. Well, like I said, it's one of those things where you dream of achieving that goal, and then if you do, it's really something special. It's an amazing place to see a show and to get to perform there. You know, it's it's a it's a terrific accomplishment to get to play that room. It's a very special place, and so the thought of something that being removed and and you know, musically, there's a lot of clubs shutting down in this town. There's a lot of of subculture that's that's starting to vanish and, and I hate to see that because there's so much richness to the city yeah. um, in in all these various arts and so losing another place that's a home for that is it's kind of unthinkable and so uh, you know I know for us it was a dream to just get to that <laughs> stage and uh, you know think of all the artists that feel the same way yes. to remove that from the city would be I'm repeating myself, but tragic. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. Well, we appreciate you guys coming to play this morning and to call attention to this, and we'll keep covering it. And I know people can, you know, agree and disagree about these various things, but there seems to have been an, an upswell around this that we certainly noticed. And so we will continue to cover this story. We've linked more information on New Day's website, so you can keep up both with developments and with window panes next show, so you can go out and see them as well. Still ahead, a woman who climbed Africa's tallest mountain tackles an even weightier challenge. She shares her dramatic weight loss experience in a new book. We'll be right back.